Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Bengal Tiger Podcast, the Portal Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me once again is Shay Dixon. Shay, how are you doing today? Fixing my hair. First time I had looked at uh, myself, I guess, in the mirror today, in the camera today. Got some calyx working. That's okay. And uh, we have a we have a guest on the on the couch as well. Lundy's here. Yeah, that would be the. Oh, there she is. Being nice and quiet. If the if the windows are not open, uh, then she's pretty quiet. If they were open right now, she would be barking at every squirrel out there. Yeah, and uh, as long as there's no package being delivered or anything like that. That's that's the other one. Golden Retriever friendly pod. Uh, yes. Here at the Bengal Tiger. Yes, yes, we are. Yes, we are. Um, well, it is Lundy. Lundy not yeah. in the portal. I'm keeping her. No, she's. Uh, I got her out of the portal. She was a uh, an a rescue pup, but she's not in the portal any longer. So we'll focus on the guys who are. It's a good. Uh, it's a good pickup. Then it's a good pickup. Uh, yeah, the players in the portal. You and Billy did a podcast last week, uh, kind of hitting on all seven of them. The the players that LSU added. A really good pod if y'all want to go back and listen to that, giving a rundown of their situations, where they come from, how they fit, all that good stuff. Um, we have more news on the portal as far as visits and all that stuff goes. Uh, but where do you want to start this podcast off uh, today? Look, let's recap real quick. They've got seven guys. I wanted your thought here. Um, Aaron Anderson obviously was the very first edition. He's the only guy, Matty B. Uh, Aaron Anderson was an Edna Carr grad. Uh, coming out of New Orleans in high school a year ago, he was a top 100 player. Um, one service had him as a five star, but consensus very, very you know highly recruited, touted player. Went to Bama within a year. He's back now. So, Aaron Anderson, the only player on offense that LSU has added uh, so far through the portal. Six of the other guys, so seven total. Six of the other are on defense, and I'll read you through the list real quick, Matty B. But Spoiler, it's D linemen and it's corners, which are the two spots that Brian Kelly said they really needed to address. So uh, Braden Swinson is an edge rusher out of Oregon. Thank B. Joe Gelari spot. Uh, D lineman Paris Shand out of Arizona. Uh, thank Ali Gay spot. Uh, Jalen Lee out of Florida, who's a Louisiana native, who's committed to LSU for a bit uh, in high school, ultimately ended up signing with the Gators. He's coming back home as a defensive tackle. Jordan Jefferson, not that Jordan Jefferson. Uh, coming from West Virginia as a senior. So he's the oldest of the bunch, uh, but gives him some immediate uh, help there on the interior of the defensive line. Then a couple corners, one big name that everybody knew, Denver Harris, former five-star, uh, was a midseason All-American uh, before he was suspended for the rest of his freshman year at a and He hit the portal. Now he's going to LSU, which is a spot he was high on out of high school. And then Zy Alexander out of Southeastern, just down the road in Hammond. Uh, FCS All-American and played really well in the Southland for a couple of years. He'll be a junior next year. They add him at corner. When I read you through the seven names, I feel like it's a given who everybody's going to answer. What's the biggest ad so far? I'm going to go with Denver Harris. I think I'm going to go with Denver Harris. Aaron Anderson is obviously going to, I think has the potential to be very good, but obviously you look at the needs of what this team uh, is going to have over the offseason, and Denver Harris should check a box um, that this team will have going into the season. Even um, I like Zay Alexander from Southeastern as well. Uh, good hands, six foot three, really good athlete. Um, I'm going to have to see it a little bit more through spring camp and you know, over the summer and fall. Kind of, I need to see him round out his game a little bit more, but overall, the tools are all there for him to be. Uh, a piece of this cornerback room. Uh, does that mean he's going to start? I don't know, but he, he was a good pickup as well. So Denver Harris is my guy that the biggest addition so far because the upside uh, and the fact that it's at a position of need is, is huge. Yeah. Look, I think everybody knows Denver Harris was the big name. I'm really interested. I feel like we, and we've got some exposure bias outside of Denver being really good at football. We had already seen him a lot like LSU recruited him in high school. We knew what kind of player he was at North shore. Um, a lot of people have seen Zy Alexander over at Southeastern. A lot of these D linemen, at least for me, coming from like West Virginia, Oregon, Arizona, um, Florida. even Jalen Lee at Florida. Like I didn't watch a ton of uh, those guys play, especially the guys who were not in the SEC. So I'm interested to see if they become more than just depth pieces, if they can actually kind of lock down starting jobs. But very clear that, you know, you lose Ali Gay, you've lost – 
um, Jaquel and Roy, you know, a couple of guys on the defensive line, not just replacing them, but they felt like they had to have some depth uh, beyond what they were riding this season. So um, you see kind of where they're at so far. And as we continue to talk through this pod, Matty B, I think it drives the point home that defensive line is still a position uh, yeah. that they're after. If we're including edge rushers as well as DNs and D tackles, that's the group they seem to be really focused on. Yeah. The uh, of those defensive linemen the four that they have so far the one that i'm the highest on is jordan jefferson uh okay. out of west virginia watching his tape i did a the kind of group right up on the four defensive linemen watching the went back and watched the their games their highlights all that stuff and jordan jefferson to me looks like a playmaker like he was really really good this past year so um he's the one i'm excited for obviously we'll see how spring unfolds how summer and fall goes because Maybe a guy like Brandon Swinson could be really good or Parishan could be good, but Justin Jefferson or Jordan Jefferson to me is is the one that I'm the highest on. We're going to mess this up a lot. I've already written Justin a number of times. So I covered Jordan when he was here. Yeah. Then I covered their brother, Ricky, then Justin. Now we're going back to the well and starting over with Jordan, just not related. So very difficult. Uh, jo yeah, Jordan Jefferson. Okay. So is this a true nose tackle? What did he? How what? How was he used at West Virginia? Or yeah, maybe how can he be used here? Yeah, he's more of a, more of like a Mason Smith. I don't think he's a nose nose. I think he's in uh, one of the gaps, uh, a gap, or one of the different techniques off off the ball. But uh, I think you shuffle him around. He was really really good at getting a push in the run game, and then I actually saw a little bit of wiggle in the pass rush as well. So if he can come in and give you what. I mean, Jaquel and Roy wasn't fantastic this past year. He had a really good 2021 season. 20, this past season, he was good. He wasn't great. If he can give you a little bit of that, and then you obviously have Wingo and uh, Smith as your starters, if he can come in and be that number three DT for you, I think that's a really good third option. I think, too, with Jaquel, and I thought Jaquel had a strong year. I think what made his year so great is that he never left the field. And yes. then it was like, okay, you – when you lost Mason Smith and it was down to him and Makai Wingo on the inside and Makai Wingo coming off a of freshman all American, excuse me, all SEC freshman year at Missouri transfers in immediately moves into a bigger role when Mason Smith goes down and then kind of became that guy for him that uh, was their best player on the interior. He gets to come back. Jaquelin's going pro now. So we'll see. Look, we saw a little bit of Jacoby and Guillory who we've seen before. Uh, but first kind of glimpses of Fitzgerald West in the uh, game against Purdue. It was obviously Purdue. They were undermanned, but uh, those guys look good. So adding in all these portal guys certainly helps. They'll have some good depth and, and at spots, some proven depth. I did I want to update the scholarship numbers real quick. So Anthony Bradford, we're recording this on Friday, LSU starting right guard, has become the first offensive lineman starter to enter the portal for LSU. Uh, excuse me, not in the portal. Into the draft. To, to declare for the draft. Yeah. Uh, so you've got four of the starters coming back on the O-line. And it's really one of those where you could say you've got all five because Garrett Dellinger and Miles Frazier were kind of splitting time as starters. So both, you know, at different points were starting. And it wasn't because one was getting pulled because he wasn't playing well. Dellinger mm -hmm. got hurt. And then when he came back, they were trying to work him in. So they've got five guys that they can slot into all the spots. Um, we'll see, obviously, if they can – Zalon's heard some other guys can get into the mix. But we haven't seen them – we'll talk one portal guy uh, in a bit here on the offensive line, but haven't seen them too heavy on the O-line. But with Bradford out, that my count, if I'm going returning scholarship players, and I'm including Josh Williams in that just because at this point he's a starter for you. I know he's a one-time walk-on. Yes, but returning guys, 25 signees, December as high school guys – and then seven transfer portal additions so far. I've got them at 78 scholarship guys. You can be or you have to be under or at or under 85 when fall camp starts. So just kind of to give you guys a glimpse, they've taken seven portal guys. They have seven open spots left. Obviously, high school guys would fit into there as well. I don't even know if they're heavy on any more high school guys the rest of the way. I know Nicholas Harbor is a name that's been tossed around because he's a five star, but most guys they were after signed in December. So we'll keep an eye on high school prospects, but I think from here on out, it will be portal heavy. And Maddie B, we're in a portal visit stretch here um, that opened up on Thursday uh, when LSU kicked things off and brought in Justin Rogers, Kentucky. If people who are 
LSU or I should even say LSU, just kind of recruiting fans in general uh, will remember a few years back, Kentucky signed a kid out of Michigan, defensive lineman, who was a five-star when he committed to them and, and signed, but uh, was one of the highest players ever to commit to Kentucky's football program. They've done that every few weeks in basketball, obviously, but mm-hmm. uh, football-wise, that was a major coup for Mark Stoops and the staff there. Um, freshman, sophomore year, he was playing behind some guys that were veterans and moved on to the NFL. Uh, he broke through as a junior, got to start the whole way, played really well. Now he's in the portal. Um, a lot like Jordan Jefferson, who we talked about earlier, he's about to be a senior, so he's more of a short-term kind of portal addition for whomever uh, could land him. Um, he's talked about visiting Miami, Auburn, uh, a number of schools here, but the very first visit was LSU. Your thoughts on someone who is a true nose guard, um, nose tackle, however you should say it, uh, but is listed at 330, would be much more in the Jacobian Guillory mold, even a little bit bigger than he is uh, as a player. Is that a need for He's a great player. Is that a glaring need for them to get a nose tackle, another nose tackle? Yeah, I think so. It's it's because it's interesting. Jaqueline Roy was obviously the nose the past two years, right? So then you were able to work Mason Smith off of him. You are able to work Makai Wingo off of him um, in different roles. And with Roy gone, you obviously have Wingo and Smith, who you presume to start, but they aren't that true zero technique nose that Roy was. And so I think you saw it with Lee. Uh, Jared Lee is another a zero technique nose. Justin Rogers is that as well. So you see that if they're able to get Rogers and pair that with Lee and uh, Guillory as well, uh, you have those zero technique guys that just need to eat up blocks on the inside. And then you kind of go from there. Um, Cause I think they figure it out to where they start Wingo and Smith, but uh, you know, you still got to have those guys that can come in and just line up right over the center. And Matt house has been multiple as a defensive yeah. coordinator. You talked a lot about that coming in, but their base package, as you said, is getting Mason Smith onto the field as a D lineman hand in the dirt, Makai Wingo, and then an edge guy, or I should say a, a defensive end. It was Ollie Gay at times. That could be Savion Jones, if you feel like he can mm-hmm. play that spot. I know that then B.J. Ojolari plays that jack, um, which would just be a stand-up edge rusher. Uh, people have thought maybe Savion Jones plays there. They've actually brought in a lot of edge guys, whether it's through the portal uh, or a guy like Deshaun Womack, a five-star that they signed. Yeah. Um, my anticipation, I would assume you'd agree, is that they're pro- we're probably going to see a few different fronts from LSU, and that's right up Matt House's wheelhouse. Yeah, I, I think so as well. Um, because they they were pretty, like you said, they were pretty standard in in what they did, but they also were able to mix it up with Harold Perkins. That was a big, obviously, development as the season went on. So then they went to like three or three different three linebacker sets. They went to like four three or three four, depending on what you call the Jacks position. And then uh, I think with Harold Perkins, it does open the door for you to be more multiple or add him, move him wherever you need him in those situations. So. Um, I think we'll look at some other guys, but like just a guy like Justin Rogers for that defensive line depth is huge because I mean, there is a, a tweet from Leah van. Let me find it. I just had it up um, and it's from pro football focus, but she, she found it initially. Um, Makai Wingo played 777 snaps on the defensive line last year, the most in the FBS and Jaqueline and Roy played the ninth most snaps of any defensive lineman at 676. After you lost Mason Smith, it was those two are bust. I mean, that's what having them stay healthy all year was the yeah. biggest thing because they were all you had and that's all they played. Not look, I think Guillory is a good player, all that, but like all Jamar Cain was rotating in there where the, there wasn't much of a rotation after Mason Smith left. Exactly. And uh, so even if like, even if it feels like it could be excessive to add Rogers and to add, you know, multi, like six defensive linemen from the portal, it could feel excessive, but they're, they had such a long way to go to get to where depth needs to be because wing defensive tackle should not be playing 700 snaps. Like that just shouldn't be happening. And so if you get to the point where you can start rotating guys and you can be fresh for when you go play AM at college station in the last week of the season, you're not completely tired and getting ran all over. Like that's the goal. That's the goal. Yeah. I think you saw as the year went on that the reps got to guys. I mean, after a month of, Time off, Makai Wingo looked right back to the same burst yeah. he had when the season had started. So 
they got by with it. Obviously, as you said, it may feel excessive, but they want to put themselves in a position where they can get a healthy rotation of guys they rely on. And then you're not really spent by mid to late October and, uh, or excuse me, mid to late November uh, to where you just kind of run out of gas uh, for lack of a better word. We do want to give a shout out uh, to the podcast sponsor this week, Rogue Shop. Uh, Maddie B. Rogue Shop's been on board with us. If you're watching on YouTube, you see it right there, rogueshop.com, promo code Bingle Tiger. Um, look, Rogue Shop has hooked up with a number of different sites here on the On3 network. Uh, if you go to rogueshop.com, uh, they've got Delta 8 products, Delta 9, CBD, HHC. Um, these are farmers, uh, husband and wife farmers, Richard and his wife, Shar, uh, who sort of just run a sustainable plant medicine business, a uh, holistic type of small business owners who've got a couple of farms out in Oregon. Uh, they manufacture everything out of Wisconsin where they live now. But Maddie B, they are San Antonio natives where you're from, right that. down the block. That. Absolutely. Um, and also, look, everything you guys, we've talked about it on the pod before. Everyone knows about gummies, cartridges, things like that, uh, that people are using now, whether it's for chronic pain or insomnia or whatever kind of you're battling uh, through Delta 8 products and 9 and CBD and, and different things like that. But they've even got the lip balms, the bath soaks, the hemp soap, uh, different sorts of tinctures. I was on the website earlier with Billy. Uh, and they've even got a CBD hot cocoa uh, right now. But uh, everything hand done by them, they're really great to work with. Um, as I said, they've supported a number of pods across the On3 network. Uh, it's really easy. If you go to rogueshop.com, uh, they've got a chat option. They'll be there to chat with you. Uh, whenever you order something, you get it. You'll get a handwritten note uh, from Char, who sort of breaks down how to use everything. Um, but very one-on-one -on -one personal feel to it. Uh, Richard's a disabled combat vet. Uh, Texas guy, Longhorns fan. So uh, for all the A&M uh, haters out there, he's right up your alley. Uh, and then his wife, Shar, uh, is a certified CBD consultant and life coach. She's got a degree in psychology. So uh, we linked up with them this season. They've been good to us. Um, look, we've only been on board for about a month with them uh, and have already enjoyed um, a lot of people jumping on board with their product. Again, 10% off if you use the discount code Bingle Tiger. That's rogueshop.com. Be sure to check those guys out. I've actually got a package in the mail from them on the way. So on the next podcast, uh, tune in and I'll give some personal feedback uh, on that front, Matty B. Yeah, we need the Shay reviews. I got it. On the podcast. No doubt. Well, that, that's going to be, we will get away with ad reads and I will just do my personal reviews of everything <laughs> in that spot and then give you guys a discount code and you can just follow in my footsteps. Uh, but yeah, rogueshop.com. Thanks to them for being a sponsor. Uh, but we wanted to shout them out and make sure that you guys uh, knew that they were linked up with us. You can check out their website and again, 10% off with the promo code Bingle Tiger. Maddie B, let's keep it rolling in the portal. I wanted to uh, first, yes. um, because this was kind of a late, later edition, when it was, this was a couple of days ago. Uh, but Demario Tolan entering the portal, I've, we didn't have this on the rundown. I remembered it like a few minutes ago. I was like, oh, yeah, we got to hit, hit we on that. We focus a lot more on guys that coming in, right, Maddie? Yes. Okay. So, 14 total players have entered the portal for LSU. Uh, Matthew mentions Demario Tolan, a linebacker who was a freshman this year. Um, he had played on special teams, but had started to carve out a role at the end of the year when he was starting to play more at linebacker. Is it fair to circle him as the first person you were surprised entered the portal? I feel like there was a say, uh, yes, Jalen Davis Robinson as a, as a freshman corner, even though he didn't play, I still was kind of surprised by that, but this would probably be the one um, because I, the whole season we had heard, it's like, all right, we're hearing really good things about him. And then Brian Kelly goes out of his way to say, Hey, this guy's catching up to Greg Penn. He's pushing Greg Penn. He could start, he could play over Greg Penn. And we saw that in the old miss game. We were like, Oh my gosh, Demario Tolan made, I think he made four tackles that game. Like he was right. in the game. And we both liked him. We all liked him out of high school um, as, as an athlete and just what he, what he could provide and his upside. So I think there was a very real path to him, like potentially starting games next year at times. Um, so for him to leave was a little jarring. And then um, it hasn't been announced yet, but I think there was a Jock Ducey asked Mike Jones if he was done after the year, uh, after the, the bowl game. He said, yeah, this is my last ride. Go tires, tire forever and all this stuff. So the whole linebacker room is now down to what weeks pin and then the two freshmen. Are you, is uh, it going to take you this long to think of the other name? Uh, 
It's not Jones. Do you want me to give you a hint that he's the best player on the team? Oh, Perkins. Okay, yeah. See, okay, but that's what I'm saying is like Perkins moving him to inside. It's going to be really – I've said that before. How they use Harold Perkins this next year is going to be really, really interesting because he's so dynamic as a pass rusher. It's like if you put him at inside linebacker, do you still have him – rushing sometimes do you like how do you use him exactly and i'm really interested in that so um yeah the linebacker position's a little a little thin as far as inside goes yeah and i'll say this too um i am going to be intrigued by how, how harold perkins is used i thought west weeks proved to be a formidable backup for him so you feel good about him being around i'm in the greg pin is I'm, I'm not a greg pin hater there's a lot of greg pin haters out there I remember that happened for multiple years across Damone Clark's career, and then he ends up being really the stalwart of your defense as a senior. Um, not the same player, but you got Penn, and I'm look if Dave Aranda liked Penn and was playing him, and Matt House started him in every single game this year. Good linebacker coaches see something in him, and he was only a sophomore, so I, I feel like you're in a spot at linebacker, Matty B, where you've got a super versatile guy in Perkins. You've got a guy like Penn who is going to stuff the, you know, he's going to be a run stopper for you. I mean, he's going to play in the box and um, you don't have him in coverage as much. You got Weeks who can kind of do a little bit of everything. Then you mentioned they signed two guys in December. Whit Weeks has had a great, it's West Weeks' little brother, Wit, is now yes. about to be on the team. I love Wit. Wit had a great senior year. Then it's been tearing it up in San Antonio. I was talking to Charles Power, um, our national director of rankings and recruiting or I should say rankings and scouting, he's always been high on Whit Weeks, but he said, look, after watching him in San Antonio and then seeing other guys at Under Armour and then watching a lot of senior film, he felt like that Weeks was maybe, you know, one of the, not maybe, one of the best coverage linebackers in this class. So he'll be a kind of a, co- that kind of Baskerville guy who can kind of cover and do a little bit of everything for you. We know what Penn is as a pure kind of in the box, likes to play against the run. Perkins does wherever you want to put him. Yeah. But not a lot of depth. You wrote a story, though, Matty B, about linebackers in the portal. I'll tell you what I took away from that. There's not many. <laughs> like, I said that. There's I wrote not that someone it... that LSU should just point to and be like, go get that guy. Like, no doubt. Yeah. It felt a lot like uh, the tight end situation last year. I wrote that kind of at the end. It's like, remember how last year it was like, all right. Yeah, I think Brian Kelly said, we're going to we're gonna add a tight end. Like, we're looking to add tight ends. Everybody's like, tight ends. And then they went to the portal and was like, there's nobody out here that's worth adding. Um, now the Virginia linebacker obviously is good, but he um, he'll be courted by everybody in the country. So who knows? And we don't. We'll, we'll have to see how visits go with all these players if they even bring you know who they bring on and whatnot. But it feels a lot like that to where they might just have to make make do with the, the five that they have, or maybe bring in a backup type guy like Colby Field to broaden right. it out. They did that a year ago with Colby Fields coming in as a transfer, and he's right back in the portal after not seeing any playing time. So you've kind of got to find this balance of guys that like Weeks. They took Weeks out of Virginia. He actually did play like yeah. special teams. He started. He was a, kind of on the second team as a linebacker. So you're looking for guys like that. Uh, but we mentioned seven spots available. Makes me wonder if they do keep an eye on linebacker just because uh, the room doesn't have a ton of depth there. Like you said, Mike Jones Jr. and Tolan, weren't guys who were starting or anything like that, but they were guys who you could put in there that yeah. if anything happened, you could rely upon. So yeah. uh, we'll be interesting to see there. Um, we talked about Justin Rogers out of Kentucky being on campus. Two more guys start their visits today. Um, and let's stick with the D line real quick. Gilbert Edmond out of South Carolina an edge rusher. He's taking an LSU visit. He's coming off Florida and Florida state, and then we'll be at Ole Miss. So he's got some options here. Um, not so much Edmund as a player, but I did want to ask when you see Edge, meaning this B.J. Ojolari role, that they've got Xavier Carter. They've already signed, for, who we saw a bit in the bowl game, Matty B. Um, yes. You could play Savion Jones there if you felt like he's not a hand in the dirt D end for you, uh, or maybe could do both. Uh, but they signed Braden Swinson out of Oregon. Uh, Deshaun Womack is maybe their most ready signee, and he plays the jack position. Uh, Jackson Howard is physically ready for sure. Uh, he's listed as a Jack guy, though he could also play with his hand in the dart as a yeah, little he end. Um, he's versatile. But is Edge still a big need for you? Do you think they've already addressed that, or is it 
Because I feel like if you add a guy like this out of South Carolina, he wasn't a bona fide starter there. He was playing in a rotation, all that. I feel like there's almost a point where you're realizing we're not going to get in another BJ Ojolari. Like there's nobody in the portal that's going to come in and have 20 starts under their belt at edge. So that's one spot that you just don't know how they're going to use it until you get there, because it's just going to be a lot of guys, whether through the portal, whether through high school, whether like Xavier Carter, who's coming back, but hasn't really played a lot. It's going to be an unknown. Yeah. We talked about defensive tackle, maybe feeling a little excessive, but it made sense. Uh, this defensive end slash Jack situation, if if they, let's say they add this South Carolina guy, let's just say it, they do. Um, a name that we, or that I forget about, I'll say is a Quincy Wiggins. Like yeah. you add him back to the mix too. And I, he's kind of a guy who can play either. He can play that traditional hand in the ground defensive end spot. He's not as much a Jack, I don't think, but still we're looking at these edge guys and we're just like, you had Shand, you had Swenson. If you had um, uh, Gilmer uh, out of Gilbert Edmond out of South Carolina, it's like you have good players with tools, but you already have Savion Jones, you have Xavier Carter. I I worry that we're in the stage of where it's quantity over quality, and while I understand it, it doesn't feel like it's going to have a significant it won't significantly upgrade this defensive line if that makes sense i also think that if all goes as planned deshaun womack is who you hope becomes your starting edge jack position as a true freshman it just may take him a little bit to get there you know to get your feet wet you play a few games and then they trust you to be out there uh that will be interesting to see because it seems they're heavy on edge guys so at least they want to beef up that position um the next and final visitor that we know of, at least, um, has kept things very low key. Matty B. He went to the portal in early December, and essentially, it seems he's down to two teams, and it's Jake Renfro out of Cincinnati. And I'll tell you the position he plays in a second. But Cincinnati went through coaching changes. Luke Fickle took the Wisconsin job. Everybody had been waiting to hear when Fickle would make the j- jump from Cincinnati to a bigger job. He did with the Wisconsin job. And it goes without saying that Jake Renfro, who had started for him for multiple years, is now looking heavily at Wisconsin. The other school he's looking at is LSU, and he starts his visit today. And this is not a defensive lineman. This is not a defensive tackle. This is not a corner. He plays center, and he's a multi-year starter at center. And Mike Denbrock, who's the offensive coordinator at LSU now, was the offensive coordinator at Cincinnati, so he's very familiar with what Jake Renfro brings to the table. If they're bringing him in on a visit, that tells me that they think he's uh, more than talented enough uh, to play at this level, and he's certainly proven that. He is widely considered to be one of the best offensive linemen in the portal, certainly one of the top centers. Here's why I kind of brought some intrigue into that, and then I want to ask you, they have a starting center, and this would be the first portal target really Matty B that they're after where it would not just mean like we're bringing in competition, but you might be bringing in someone to replace your starting center uh, who was Charles Turner. And they began this year with Garrett Dellinger at center. Then they moved to Charles Turner at center. Then Charles Turner won the job. He played the rest of the way. Um, I've got the sheet up here. Let's see. Um, He did not start game one, obviously, but then he started in week two and he started every other game minus the UAB game. I think he was just resting up uh, Mm -hmm. that week. Um, So thoughts, I mean, and, or does this just boil down to, this is what you do to make your roster better. Yeah. I I think this is necessary to a degree. And it's crazy because Charles Turner, um, I always looked at it throughout this season. I was like, wow, he got a lot better. I mean, they gave him the most improved player award at their postseason award show. Um, Good call. Yeah, and so it's like awesome. Charles Turner was really, really improved, uh, really, really um, key to this team's communication up front. Um, no bad snaps. You know, couldn't really ask too much more of him at a baseline level um, this season. Now, the problem is he's not elite. And if you want a guy with higher upside, you look at a guy like Jake Renfro. I haven't looked at his, his, at his uh, film or anything like that. But like you said, a lot of people say, hey, this is a guy who could start on an SEC team. And if you have a chance to upgrade that position, 
with a multi-year starter, then you just have to do it, I think. And Mike Denbrock, like you said, he has seen Renfro for a year, started in 2021. Last year, he saw Charles Turner start an entire season. He has plenty of idea of what these two guys are. If he thinks Renfro is a better player, bring him in. I mean, it, it was clear to me in fall camp, and this might be harsh, but they were looking for to start Garrett Dellinger at center, right? Because he was a better player than Charles Turner. The problem was obviously he wasn't better center than Charles Turner. So um, I think you got to take your shot and see if they can pull Jake Renfro. You know, worst case scenario, you end up with Charles Turner at center again. I think that's still pretty good. And we saw some Marlon Martinez, who's by yeah. far – outside of the guys we've mentioned on O-line, is by far their most experienced player. You hope that you can keep him around uh, and he continues to kind of be a plug-in player, compete to start, whatever it might be. Uh, but he's given – he's had multiple years of experience now and started some games for LSU. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the O-line shakes out, um, but we'll keep an eye on that. Renfro is in town this weekend. As we said, he's kept things very quiet. He's not been doing interviews or posting about any visits, so – it's sort of Wisconsin and the staff he's familiar with or LSU, which we're moving into SEC ball. He's at the back end of his college career. So it's probably for him about putting out more film uh, and kind of obviously jumping from Cincinnati to Wisconsin or LSU would be a leap up in competition. So um, you can kind of understand why he's wanting to do it. We will keep you guys updated on what we hear. Um, Matty B, I you guess could, as we want, go ahead. Last thing, last thing, last thing. Um, you can also throw in, even though, I don't want us to get spoiled by how good freshmen are or can be because of what Emory Jones and Will Campbell did and what, you know, maybe Zalen's hurt can do. DJ Chester has been getting reps at center in the Under Armour All-American. Uh, he's, I'm very, very high, high on his tape. Do I think he can come in and start? Probably not, but I'm just saying that's another center you have in that conversation uh, that'll be coming in. It'll be interesting to see. I'm, Curious how that O-line – well, if they end up with a guy like Renfro, how the O-line spot uh, shakes yeah. out. And if not, then kind of where they go from there, if it's an open competition, which I imagine it will be, like most spots in the team, uh, ultimately who can win that job, that's an answer we probably won't have until the season starts because we did not have that answer even midway through fall camp when Garrett Dellinger was there, uh, and then they shifted into Charles Turner. Uh, last thing uh, we did want to note, there are a couple of other guys out there um, that we've confirmed that LSU's reached out to that are in the portal but have not visited yet. Um, and I'm going back to familiar spots here, Matty B. One's a defensive tackle, or I should say defensive lineman. I guess he could be versatile. Um, and Anthony Lucas, who, if you remember the name, he was a five-star coming out of high school a year ago. He had LSU on his short list, and he went to AM as part of that big signing class they had when they finished number one in the rankings. Now he's part of the group that's leaving after one year. Uh, LSU's already had one of those guys in Denver Harris. We'll see if they can get Anthony Lucas to campus. And then the other is a name we weren't familiar with coming out of high school, uh, but one person on LSU staff was. His name's J.K. Johnson. He's a cornerback at Ohio State. And Matty B had started uh, a handful of games this year, um, but then towards the back end of the season, he got replaced. He became more of a rotational player. Uh, and now after two seasons at Ohio State, he's looking elsewhere. And we mention him because not just because LSU's reached out and is kind of gauging things, but when he left high school, he graduated from DeSmet in yeah. St. Louis. And his head coach was Robert Steeples, who just happens to be LSU's cornerbacks coach. So you're looking for corners. Your cornerbacks coach coached a kid who is now leaving Ohio State, who when he left high school two years ago, he was ranked as the number one player in the state uh, on on three in Missouri. So highly touted coming out, speedy kid. Um, battled through an injury his first year, kind of rehab assignment, uh, so took a red shirt. And then this year, got into some starting time. But as the year went on, Ohio State sort of shuffled up their defensive backfield. And then they had a change at defensive coordinator, and they had a couple of guys hit the portal. He was one of them. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, but for me, again, not surprised. Certainly not surprised that they're still looking to add corners because yes. – when you're only bringing back two guys in LaTerrence Welsh and Seven Banks, and neither of them have ever played corner at, you know, recently, Seven Banks did at Ohio State, but he's had back to back season, in, yeah, two years of ending season ending injuries. So you don't even know where his health set. Um, he's got experience. He just will not have been on the field for a couple of seasons. And then Welsh was a highly recruited prospect, but he was a true freshman this year and they brought in a bunch of transfers. So he didn't get to play a lot. It was mostly special teams, um, but you'll see what his development is. 
but not many teams in the country only bring two cornerbacks back. And let's be real. They only signed one true corner out of high school in Jeremiah Hughes. They are patchworking the position by putting guys like Javian Toviano and Ashton Stamps, who were ranked as safeties, but had played some safety and some corner in high school. They were really just the best DB on their team. So they got to kind of play wherever they're starting out at corner. You've added Denver Harris and Zy Alexander. They've got experience. You could think, okay, I could pencil them both in. Adding another corner, I think, makes them feel a little bit better about where that room's at. So I uh, would not be surprised if they kick the tires on a guy like Johnson and kind of see where he's at and maybe where he could stack into the, the room. Uh, and as well, at defensive tackle, it's much like looking at a guy like Justin Rogers. You're just – anyone who's out there that's talented enough to play the position, you take a look at. Come on down. Uh, I do think the cornerbacks, you, you hit on it nicely. With You laid it out with all the players that they could have next year. We name all those players. I'm, I'm pretty high on Zay Alexander, sure. Um, obviously, I think Terrence Walsh is very talented. I was really high on him out of high school. I think it was my number one or two play, favorite player out of that class. Um, and then Seven Banks, you know, could be good. The, Toviano, Toviano will be good. But to me... Opposite of Denver Harris, I think there's very much a wide open door for who could potentially start at the second cornerback spot. And J.K. Johnson, while, like you said, that was two, two, this past year, um, he was good and then kind of got lost in the shuffle a little bit. We're talking about a guy that was a top 70 player coming out of high school, top six cornerback coming out of high school in the 2021 class. So that's only two years removed from that. And so I think you can definitely afford to take a high upside swing at a cornerback uh, in the portal um, this, this off season. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. So seven guys are already in the boat. They have seven open spots. So we imagine they will be heavy on the portal. We ran down the guys who are just visiting. We'll see if they add some more visitors. Uh, and then about the middle of the month, I think it's sometime after the 15th, shortly after the 15th is when the portal window closes. And mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that, visits will stop or commitments will stop or any of that. That's just when, if you want to be in the portal, you have to have your name in by that date. So uh, we will have another portal podcast next week, update you guys again. Uh, and then the week after that, we'll be pretty much wrapping up with everyone who's in the portal and that'll give us a good feel for what's out there. And then the next portal window, the only other portal window uh, opens in May after spring practices. That's only a 14 day window. So uh, we'll see after spring ball, whether it's LSU players going in, whether it's them trying to identify through spring what some needed kind of areas of weakness to, to add guys would be uh, and see if they don't get active there again. But uh, so far, seven additions, um, all at positions of need. And this weekend with three or four visitors on campus is going to be uh, a pretty kind of key one going into the final stretch here. Yeah. Uh, last thing uh, I have is a question, a uh, position we haven't hit on. Um, I, this is strictly out of curiosity. As, uh, do you think they would, are looking at adding a running back at any point? It's, it's by far the most curious position for me because yeah. right now we don't know if John Emery is going pro or not. Like we've heard he was leaning towards going pro, but obviously Frank Wilson and the staff will do what they can to convince him to stay. Jo it'd be unfair to say anybody but Josh Williams is your starter because he was the starter all year, especially every time he was healthy, he was a starter, yeah. uh, even being a former walk-on. Then you've only got, what, Noah Kane, who is at the back end of his career and really has kind of moved into a role of what we've seen. He gets a lot of goal line touches. He Kickoff plays, returns. Yeah, kick returns, plays a backup role for you, a guy you need. Um, but in terms of, like, bona fide starter – it's still, he wouldn't dethrone Josh Williams from that yeah. spot. And then I don't know if Emory comes back or not. I think maybe largely hinges on that because the only other guy on rosters are Monty Goodwin. And he's now had back-to-back -back, uh, injuries in the two seasons he's been on campus and hasn't been able to, to really stay healthy. That was kind of an issue for him in high school. He's got all the talent in the world. It's just, man, he's been bitten by the injury bug time and time again. And then it's two true freshmen in Trey Holly and Caleb Jackson. And Caleb Jackson's coming off an injury that ended mm -hmm. his senior year. So yep. that that is like if I wouldn't see the need to go grab like another Noah Kane. Like if, exactly. if I'm in the portal looking for running backs, it's either someone who is Big game. a bona fide starter or I'm just riding with what I got. That's my okay. opinion. 
Yeah, I think it kind of hinges on John Emery. If John Emery returns, honestly, I think I don't think they and they returned the same four that they had last year. I don't think that they should or would go to the portal because you'll have six running backs, six scholarship running backs at that yeah. point. And while it might not be, you don't have Leonard Fournette walking through that door. You have six backs, so you kind of got to make it work. If Emory leaves, I think there is a, a chance, and I think there's opportunity for you to, like you said, go big game hunting and go look for a, a Jameer Gibbs, you know, a Travis Dye, a guy like that that can change the complexion of your offense um, moving forward. I will say and note on our way out here, LSU in the Citrus Bowl did set the program record for a season for most rushing touchdowns in one season. I think they had 37. Um, now, granted, Jaden Daniels had 11 of those, <laughs> yes. um, so that helps. Yes. But point being, even with Jaden Daniels getting 11 of the 37, they would get into the red zone a lot and just turn to John Emery and Noah Kane and Josh Williams and have them just punch it in from there, and it worked. And yeah. if they're going to have Jaden Daniels next year, you just get the sense that, okay, well, if it if this running back group was good enough this year, then they'd be good enough next year. Uh, taking another step forward. So, but I'm with you. A lot hinges on uh, John Emery and kind of what his status is. So, and we'll know that soon. The deadline to declare for the draft is uh, within a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. The offensive line is obviously very, very important in the run game. And Jaden Daniels having him changes things. So, you definitely uh, can get by with having this group again uh, moving forward. So, all right. We got everything, Shay. We hit every, we uh, go, get through the run, rundown. Yep. Everything's knocked out. We're portal. Portaled out at this point. Portaled out, portaled out. All right. Well, uh, uh, you can check out the Bengal Tiger on three. Uh, Billy's got updates from San Antonio uh, for the latest in the All-American game down there and all the practices. I mean, every day is out there. So check out that. Uh, I got all the basketball stuff you need uh, on the site. The women's team continues to run through. The men's team has a game against AM and uh, tomorrow, which will be interesting. And then, yeah, we got portal – news and recruiting and all the tidbits and rumors that you need on the site so uh we still got where's my hat there it is there's the hat there you go there you go subscribe to the Bengal tiger check out um what we got available and uh, we appreciate everybody that's jumped on and uh yeah subscribe to the channel if you haven't already um leave us a like comment share subscribe leave us a five-star rating wherever you're listening if you're listening on apple spotify all that good stuff we appreciate y'all for joining us we will talk to y'all later